So the first color I have for you guys today is called Master Plan, and this is a really light gray with a neutral tone to it. Um, sorry for the lack of video last week. Last week was actually kind of a busy week, and then, um, like work-wise, and then I ended up making a ton of plans with like friends and family, so I didn't have the time to film um, a video. So yeah, sorry that there was no Swatch My Stash last week, but it was also a holiday weekend for us here in the US. So um, yeah, friends and family kind of took priority. But this is actually not bad in the first coat. This is one of the Essies that's like not terrible to work with formula wise. It goes on fairly, you know, it's not opaque, but it goes on fairly opaque in that it gives you a nice color base for your nails. So if you wanted something that was just like a clean blank slate on your nails, um, this is actually not bad. So yeah, that's the first coat of Master Plan. I'm gonna go in now with the second coat of Master Plan, and this actually gets fully opaque in two coats, which again is on the great side for Essie. <laughs> um, Essie formulas, again, have not been my favorite. They're quite finicky and sometimes very difficult to work with, especially the creams. So yeah, that is the second coat of Master Plan. So this is what Master Plan looks like up close. I think I am gonna destash this one because I, again, I don't wear it very often and I have a couple of, um, of these sort of chic neutrals and other brands. The first one that comes to mind is Sephora by OPI's Metro Chic, which I, I know it's like not the same shade, but I pull for that one a lot more. And then like You Don't Know Jacques from OPI, again, not the same shade, but those types of shades, I pull for more than this one. So this is going to get destashed. The next color is called Ready to Boa, and this was from the most recent Essie Holiday Collection. Um, they actually sent the collection to me, and I believe this is the only one that I have kept of that collection. Um, the rest actually went to various happy homes in my friends and family's lives. Um, this one I kept at the time because I really loved the way that it looked on me. Um, as a brown, I felt that it had a really nice, not just like standard brown tone to it, but it had almost like a reddish cola type coat tone to it. And then the shimmer running through it was also really pretty. Um, this has a really nice formula. It actually goes on really opaque to the point where it looks completely opaque in one coat. I will do a second coat because there are some sparse spots that I can see at this angle. So yeah, that is the first coat of Ready to Boa. I'm gonna go in now with the second coat of Ready to Boa and I will mention right now, my nails are super, super short because three of them broke um, about a week and a half ago and like broke really close to the edge and so they've been like nubbin nubbins for a while too um, and they're just starting to have some sort of free edge so I'm sorry that they're so short in this video um, but it was the best I could do to get them into a nice shape to swatch on. So yeah, that is the second coat of Ready to Bella. It's completely opaque in two coats and it actually applies really nicely upon itself. So this is what Ready to Boa looks like up close. Up close you can definitely see that reddish tone come out. Um, this one I think I am going to destash as much as I really like this one and it was my favorite from the SE Holiday Collection. Um, I have quite a few dark shimmers like this that I am going to use this fall and I feel like I need to start cutting them down somewhere and so um, over like a dark red or a dark purple browns are generally the ones that I don't use, so this one is going to get destashed. So the next color I have is called Little Brown Dress, and this was one of the first Essie creams that I actually purchased. Um, this was another one that I saw on Scrangie, I think, um, and I purchased it because I didn't have any browns. So yeah, that's why I got this one. It is, again, just a brown cream. It's actually not changed colors, which was a problem that I had with my OPI brown that I showed you guys in my swatch videos earlier. Um, in the first coat, it has a slightly thinner formula. It has that like shiny, thin formula that um, is, it's like not a jelly, but it's just like a sheer, more sheer, shiny formula of creams. So yeah, that's the first coat of Little Brown Dress. I'm gonna go in now with the second coat of Little Brown Dress, and this gets fully opaque in two coats. 
Again, it, sh um, it dries pretty shiny and yeah, it's just like a dark sort of espresso coffee type of brown color. Um, it's pretty easy to use. It doesn't drag upon itself on the second coat. So yeah, that's the second coat of Little Brown Dress. So here's what it looks like up close. Um, <laughs> I think I'm gonna destash this one as well because I haven't used it in a really long time and I don't wear brown very often. So yeah, this one is gonna get destashed. This one's kind of hard to destash because I have had it for so long and it's kind of like a comfort item to me, like a nostalgic comfort nail polish to me, even though I don't wear it. So yeah, this one is going to be destashed. The next polish that I have to show you guys is called Material Girl, and this is another earlier purchase. Um, I actually went through a phase of trying to find the best, like, blackened cherry type color that was a cream, like the best vampy red. Um, and through many Google searches, Material Girl was one of the ones that came up the most. So I bought it and it's very pretty and I realized as I was swatching all these polishes when I bought them that the difference between them is minimal and it's very hard to tell between which one is which. So yeah, that is Material Girl. You can see the base itself is a little bit more of a wine color. It's not quite like a cherry red that's that's a darker tone of red, for example. So yeah, the first coat, um, you get that sort of standard with reds sheer base where you can tell exactly what type of tone it is, and then the second coat, it builds up to be really dark and vampy. So yeah, that's the first coat of Material Girl. I'm gonna go in now with the second coat of Material Girl, and it does get opaque in two coats. Again, in that second coat, it just gets that really vampy finish, and you know, it's one of those colors that you wear it, and it looks very similar to other dark vampy reds that you have, and you guys know the story with dark vampy reds. I do really love dark vampy reds, which is why I have ended up accumulating quite a few of them, but I just, at this point, can't justify keeping all of them. So yeah, that is the second coat of Material Girl. The most annoying thing in the world is when you paint your nails and uh, just a speck of dust lands right, right on your nail, right after you've done it, and you can't get it off because it'll ruin your nail. So yeah, this is what it looks like up close. Um, <laughs> I think I'm going to destash this one as well because again, I have a lot of dark reds. Um, and this one, ugh, it's another one that I like nostalgically love because I bought it so long ago, but I just can't justify keeping it. So this is going to get destashed. The next color is called Masquerade Bell, and this is another one that I bought in the search of the perfect dark red, and it is like a half a shade lighter, a little bit more wine toned, um, and a little bit creamier of a formula. Um, at the first coat, again, looks very, very similar. You get that sort of sheer shade so you can see exactly what type of red it's gonna be, and then it builds up really nicely. Um, this one, because it has a slightly creamier formula, um, applies a little bit more evenly. So yeah, that's the first coat of Masquerade Bell. I'm gonna go in now with the second coat of Masquerade Bell, and this gets fully opaque in two coats. I feel like the color gets a little bit more of that wine tone as well when you put the second coat on. Um, so yeah, that is the second coat. So this is Masquerade Bell up close. I think I'm gonna destatch this one as well. It's actually very similar to Mrs. O'Leary's Barbecue by OPI, so if you guys were looking for a polish that was like this, then check that one out. Uh, so yeah, this one is going to get destashed. The next color is called Limited Addiction, and this is a red cream. Um, I started filming and then my camera stopped recording, so that's the first coat. It's a really nice red cream formula. Um, I actually bought it because Temptalia first reviewed it way back when, when it first came out in like 2010, and gave it an A+, so um, that's why I actually bought it. It's really easy to apply. It's kind of your standard red cream color, but yeah, it's a really nice red nail polish for Messi. I'm gonna go in now with the second coat of Limited Addiction, and it does get fully opaque in two coats, and you get this really beautiful, shiny, almost lacquer-like finish to the nail with this like nice, rich red finish, so, or red color. So yeah, I actually really like this one, um, and yeah, that's two coats of Limited, addic limited Addiction. So this is what Limited Addiction looks like up close. This one I am gonna destash because I have kept a couple of other red creams, so um, it just doesn't have space in my stash for it anymore. The next color is called Red Nouveau. This was another color that actually I bought because on Temptalia she reviewed it as an A+. Um, I think this was a 
fall color as well. Either Limited Addiction or Red Nouveau. One of them was a fall color and one of them was a spring color. I think this one was the spring color. Um, and this is a little bit more of an orangey red with actually a really nice opaque formula to the point where it's actually opaque in one coat. You guys can see that it goes on really nice and thick and smooth and fully covers. So yeah, that's the first and only coat of Red Nouveau. So this is what Red Nouveau looks like up close. I think I am going to keep this one just because I really like the formula of it. Um, and then at the end of all my Swatch My Stash videos, I'm going to weed out some of the other more orangey tone reds from there as well. So yeah, that is Red Nouveau. The next color I'm going to show you is called Hipponema, and this was actually sort of a newer purchase. This was a summer purchase about three years ago, and this is a really orange toned red color. Um, this is pretty much the only like orangey color that I have and it's, it's still definitely like a red coral color. Um, this actually matched a purse that I bought the same year from Target. And um, yeah, this was like a huge color a couple of years ago. This tone was in a lot of different stores in terms of clothes and accessories and stuff so yeah it actually applies really nice it has that same sort of glassy cream finish where it's not super creamy but it does definitely have like um like an opacity to it that um that like a jelly wouldn't have but it has that sort of glassy finish so yeah that's the first coat of hipponema I'm gonna go in now with the second coat of Hipponema, and this gets fully opaque in two coats. Um, just to let you guys know, if you do end up finding this one or purchasing it, or you have it, um, well, if you have it, you'll probably know this one. This one does stain a little bit. This one definitely, when I used it in the past, left quite a bit of like an orangey, reddish finish on my nails when I took it off. So um, just be aware that this color will do that if you purchase it. So here's what Hipponema looks like up close. This is another one that I'm gonna keep to compare just to make sure at the very end of the series that I don't have anything anything similar to it because I do like the sort of orangey coral finish of this. I'm not a super cor like orange person, but this is kind of as orange as I get. So yeah, that is Hipponema. I have two sort of corally colors to show you, and then I actually don't have any oranges or yellows from Essie. Um, so yeah, this is California Coral. This is definitely on the pink side of corals, but um, it got organized into like the, the red section because it's a coral. Um, this is a pinky coral color with a pretty standard Essie cream formula. It's a little bit on the thin side and it's really pretty. It's got that, again, sort of glassy finish to it. This is a really nice, just springtime pink color. I'm gonna go in now with the second coat of California Coral and this does get opaque in two coats. The pinkiness comes out a little bit more in that second coat as does, as does the, um, the creaminess of it. Um, it does get a little bit brighter and it's not difficult to work with in two coats. Like it doesn't drag upon itself, but um, you do have to be careful of not manipulating it too much on the nail because then it will get a little bit patchy. So this one I am going to keep. I find it actually a pleasantly flattering coral on me. Corals don't tend to be very good looking on me because they do tend to be on the orange side, but I think because of the pink tones, I like the way this looks. And this is, although I am going to keep it for now, going to be one that I do compare to other polishes in my stash at the very end of this project. So yeah, that is California Coral. So the last color I have to show you guys today is called Knockout Pout, and this is another sort of corally color, but it is a neon. Um, this color I actually purchased because Ingrid was wearing it in like an Instagram photo way back, way, way long ago. Again, like pre coming out Ingrid, like still dating Luke Ingrid when she got suddenly super obsessed with Essie um, and like was wearing Essie nail polish all the time, which now I just feel like it's because she was sponsored by Essie. But anyway, um, she had like an Essie phase for sure. And this is one of the colors that she wore on her Instagram. And I actually really loved the way it looked on her, um, which... Obviously I bought it because it looked good on her and didn't realize that we don't look the same. But anyway, um, that's the first coat of Knockout Pout. You can see it's actually pretty streaky and pretty patchy. Like it's definitely got not a great formula. So that's the first coat of Knockout Pout. I'm gonna go now with the second coat of Knockout Pout and this gets basically opaque in 
two coats, but again, it is a polish that has the tendency of getting patchy and streaky, so you have to do like a very sure second coat in order for it to look good. Um, this does dry down a little bit matte, like most neons do, so you will have to use a top coat for this. So that is the second coat of Knockout Pout. So this is what Knockout Pout looks like up close, and I am going to de-stash this one. As you can see, it is a little bit patchy, and I just don't like the way the color looks on me either. It's just got a little bit too much of a warm pink tone to it, so this is going to get de-stashed. So these are the three colors that I am keeping in this video. Um, I hope you guys like this video. Again, I'm sorry that there was a gap between videos um, between the last Watch My Stash video and this one. Um, yeah, I hope you guys had a lovely holiday. If you guys are Canadian, I hope you had a lovely Canada Day. And if you guys are American, I hope you had a lovely 4th of July. If you are French, happy early Bastille's Day. <laughs> Those are all of the holidays that I can think of in July. So yeah, hope you guys are doing well. If you guys like this video, if you could give it a thumbs up, that would totally make my day. And if you could subscribe, that would also totally make my day. Otherwise, I hope you guys are doing well, and I will see you guys soon.